Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. You know what? Today's a very special day for me because an e-bike company has reached out to me to do a review on one of their e-bikes. Yeah, I don't know what they're thinking either. The nice folks over at Sonata Bikes sent me the Sonata Herald. This is a 26 inch fat tire e-bike and uh, today we're going to be assembling it. I'm going to tell you all about its specs and features and then you know what? We're going to go outside and take it on a nice ride and at the end I'll tell you, hey, you know what? Is this bike any good? All that and more today on Shoot the Chit. Is that doing too much? This looks to be probably the charger and the components. All right. Be prepared to make quite the mess. Here we go, guys. It's starting to look a little bit like a bike, right? I'd say this looks very well packaged. You can see almost every surface where there's metal has been covered. People over at Sonata, they have no shortage of zip ties. Ooh. I don't think I ever want to see another zip tie in my entire life. I think Sonata Bike started out as a zip tie company. The zip ties weren't selling. And they're like, you know what? Maybe let's start a bike company. Cut all the zip ties. And I just want to show you, take the second to show you guys this. Look at this. Sonata bikes took absolutely no chances in having your bike show up damaged. We have the pedals, a wrench, which is going to come in handy right about now. Some nuts and bolts here. Instruction manual or owner's manual. Ooh, a nice little Allen wrench kit. Yes, this is in fact a charger. The nice thing is they typically send you the tools that you're actually going to need for the install and not just random tools. So if the tool is in the kit, chances are you're going to need it. Well, here we have it guys, the fully assembled Sonata Herald. As a full disclosure, they did send me this bike uh, to do the review, but they're not paying me for this review and the opinions I express in this video are my own. That being said, I think this is a really nice looking bike. I really like the white frame. The finish on the paint job looks nice. It's got a nice gloss finish to it. If you guys are familiar, if you've seen a lot of these bikes in person, they're very big. And this one comes in at a nice, middle size. Sonata claims this will fit a rider from 5'5 to 6'6". Six six. We have a Shimano 7-speed tourney derailleur. These are very typical. You see it on a lot of these. Ch Chow Yang 26 by 4 inch fat tires. For this rack, this rack is rated at uh, 25 kilograms, which I believe is going to be right around 50 pounds. Saddle here. Um, this is, feels pretty soft, but I'm going to tell you guys something. When you ride a lot of these bikes, almost no matter how soft the saddle is, the first couple times you ride a new bike, it's going to make you sore. So if you get a bike like this and you ride it, don't jump to conclusions and get a new saddle right off the bat. Give it a chance with the, the saddle that comes on the bike and you might end up liking it. But that being said, a lot of people have their preference in saddles. So, you know, if you have a saddle you like, chances are you probably ordered it anyway. The important things about this bike are this, this is a 1000 watt motor. A uh, 48 volt, 21 amp hour battery, which is 1,006 watt hours. And it has a 48 volt, 28 amp controller. E-bike advertising can be a bit confusing. So let me try and demystify that for you a little bit. So typical like low end e-bikes, ones that you'd see like at Walmart, those are gonna be 36 volt systems and typically gonna be in the 250 watt range. One step up from that's gonna be 48 volt. And 48 volt is kind of your industry standard. The vast majority of this style of e-bike it's going to be all 48 volt systems. The th important things you're going to want to know when you're getting an e-bike is number one, the battery capacity. And this one has a 1006 watt hour battery. And what that means is this battery is capable of sustaining a load of 1006 watts for one hour. This is, I would say, on the upper end of battery capacities. Entry range batteries will be around the 500 watt hour capacity this is about double that. So this is a good size battery. And the controller is going to dictate how much power it can pull from the battery and supply to the motor at any given time. And this is a 48 volt, 28 amp 
controller. So what that means is this controller can put out a maximum of 1,344 watts. And that works perfect with this 1,000 watt motor. It has a peak power output of 1,500 watts. Step through frames like in the past used to be known as like girl bikes, right? But I have to say, I almost universally recommend getting a step through frame if you're getting a bike like this, especially if you're older or if you have any mobility issues. Like I've said, these bikes are typically very big. Even though this one's uh, not as big as a lot of the e-bikes in the segment of the market, it's still fairly big. So I'm 6'2", to give you an idea of how tall I am. So if you're coming around like normal, new bike, look at that. You know, I have to step up quite a bit. So it makes it significantly easier to just be able to step over the middle like that, guys. Pretty standard fork. You're going to have your two adjustments here. This is preload. Compression setting. So open here is going to allow you to use the suspension. Lock is going to be, this is more like a solid front fork. This is a very common, typical LCD display. It has your basic information. So this is a SW900. It has your battery gauge, your odometer, speedometer, what pedal assist level you're in. There's five pedal assist levels on this. Pretty standard brake handles here. This bike is equipped with turn signals. And a little funny note here is when I first used this, the turn signals were backwards. So apparently the taillight here was installed upside down. So I did have to adjust that. There's a horn here. I'm sure my neighbors love that. This is a kill switch. So if you press this red button, it'll make it so it disables the power and you can no longer use the motor. It gave me a little scare because I pressed this and then it said air 08. And I was like, oh no, there's something wrong with the bike. It's not, this is a kill switch. So it gives, you know, if you're in a situation where you're out riding and you need to cut off the power, hit the kill switch. This has a half twist throttle. This shifter was the bane of my existence when I got my first e-bike. I have grown into it. The biggest thing this shifter has going against it, in my opinion, is it's just ugly. It's too big, but it works very well. And I'll show you the benefit of that when you're riding. These are pretty comfortable grips, gives you a little support on your palm here. This bike is also equipped with an LED front headlight. And to turn on the front headlight, all you're gonna have to do here is from the cockpit, hold the up arrow, hold the up arrow for a few seconds and that will turn on the headlight. So that goes as far as the cockpit goes. And here, the battery has this power button here and if you press it, it will show you how much charge is left. And it has this little power switch here and that will turn off the power all together. You can put the keys in here and remove the battery from the bike. It makes it nice. So if you're in a situation where you need to move the bike around, or perhaps you want to charge the battery in another location, it's nice that you can just pull it on and off. Pedals that came with, you know, typically these bikes all, I think there's some law that says they have to come with ugly pedals, but uh, these pedals are fine. I honestly wouldn't bother changing those. We have 180 millimeter, Mechanical disc brake, I'd prefer if these were hydraulic. It has these plastic fenders, front and rear. Two amp smart charger. And what that means is this is a 21 amp hour battery. Divide that by two, gives you 10 and a half. So in theory, this battery is 100% dead. This charger will take you 10 and a half hours to charge back up. All right, now that we've gone over everything this bike comes equipped with, what do you say we do the fun part and go take it for a test ride? Come on, come on, let's go, hurry up, let's go, come on. First impressions I can tell you is this bike is really quiet. I'm riding in pedal assist three and let me explain how the pedal assist works on this bike without getting ran over first. Pedal assist one is giving me assistance up to about five miles an hour. So pedal assist one and it corresponds with the throttle. So when you're in pedal assist one, the throttle doesn't give you much power at all. And it looks like it's only helping us up to about five miles an hour. Pedal assist two, is giving me an increased amount of power and it looks like it's going to propel me up to about 12 and then so on and so forth so the higher the pedal assist levels you go the more power that it's going to give you so far i like the way pedal assist 3 feels like we're cruising around 15 miles an hour this bike gives you a nice upright riding position the grips here You'll see these grips on a lot of different bikes, but I like the little palm support it gives you. So there is a turn signal here, but there's no indicator. So you could be one of those people that's just riding around with your turn signal on. So this is what I like about the fat tires here, is you can go over surfaces like this with these rocks, and it just glides right over the top. 
definitely on a skinnier tire on a bike, you will have a hard time going through rocky surfaces like that. So these fat tires to me, they're not just a gimmick. They're good for all sorts of surfaces. You can go over sand, although I wouldn't want to ride on sand. So if you could use your fat tire bike for a cruiser, you could ride it on dirt, you can ride it on asphalt. It's great for everything. So I'm in pedal assist three and we're cruising around 16, 17 miles an hour, no problem. Here, let me demonstrate why I've kind of come around on this shifter. If you're downshifting, you can downshift like that. You see that? I just downshifted all seven gears in like one second. And upshifting uses the trigger shift. All in all, this is not a bad shifter. I just don't like the way it looks. But plenty of power to do the vast majority of things you're gonna wanna do on this bike. Um, we can see what's the top speed. Let's find out. So typically these are rated around 28 miles an hour. Oh yeah, this thing's pretty quick. Yeah, there we go, it's 28. All right, let's test these brakes. Yeah. You know, these are pretty standard. These are 180 millimeter brake rotors, but these do have mechanical disc brakes. But I have to tell you, these brakes feel plenty strong. Make sure you bet in your brakes. That makes a big difference in how well your brakes perform. But so far, these brakes feel fine to me. All right, guys, let me know in the comments, what do you think? You think this is a nice looking bike? Some of the cool places you'll end up seeing when you ride an e-bike. I have been commuting back and forth to the gym, a six mile trip, one way, for a good three or four months, and that's because I got an e-bike. With a bike like this, they're fast enough to get you from point A to point B. And after a while you realize like, hey, I could actually start using this bike to get around town. And the great thing is, it's not only you just getting around town, you're also getting exercise while you do it. This is a smooth bike, it's quiet. The way the power comes in, it doesn't just jolt right in from the start, so you end up getting a nice smooth power delivery. Let's try pedal assist four. So I noticed the bike will naturally kind of want to cruise around 17 miles an hour with pedal assist three. We're in four now and four wants to cruise right around 22, 23 miles an hour. So we're moving along pretty good right now. Yeah, it's definitely, it cuts off at 23. So pedal assist four is gonna get you going 23 miles an hour. Look, we got places to go. We gotta go in pedal assist four. You really, you're running late for that job interview. That's when you go to pedal assist five. Coming through guys. There's a reservoir at the top of this hill and cameras never pick up is how steep these hills actually are. This is pretty steep. I mean, it's not Mount Everest, but uh, riding this on a normal bike is not fun. I'll tell you that much. So let's see how well the uh, Sonata Herald does up it. Right. Going. On pedal assist three, it's struggling a little. Let's turn it up. Let's go, we're on pedal assist five now. Yeah. Look at that. And we made it. And make sure, guys, if you pass anybody on the way up, make sure to tell them it's, it's y'all you. You're just in really good shape. I've been up here a handful of times before I got an e-bike. And after I got an e-bike, I realized you can come out here whenever you want. And I found myself utilizing the public parks and spaces in my town so much more. I've been out here more times than I can count. And that's one of the unintended consequences. When you get an e-bike, you're gonna find yourself going everywhere. So at this point, I've done every trail in my town so many times, I kind of have to start commuting with my bike to go explore new areas. Hey, what do you girls think about the Sonata Herald here? It's pretty nice, huh? So you know, what's the point of going up those hills if you can't go back down, right? Oh, we'll just take the dirt path. If you like riding a normal bike, this is like riding a normal bike on steroids. 
when I see a lot of the, the marketing or the people showing off these bikes, they kind of make it seem like these are just for older folks. And don't get me wrong, they're absolute game changers when it comes to the older crowd. It makes riding so much more accessible. I always like seeing they're out on the trail and you'll see an older couple riding and it's great because I bet you if they had normal bikes, they probably wouldn't be out doing it. They bridge the gap of ability and health and fitness levels, so it's great. These things are absolutely great for that. But what I think they've failed to show or they failed to demonstrate is how much fun you can have on these bikes. Because it's not like you have to just ride like a normal bike. You can ride this bike like you can ride any bike. You can ride it like it's a normal mountain bike. You know, within reason, you wouldn't want to take this on some single track out mountain bike trails, but these bikes are a lot of fun. And uh, let, me, so if, let me see if I can demonstrate that to you. I'm having more fun on the Sonata than I thought I would. You know, with this frame being more compact, I'm noticing I can get out of the saddle and pedal. It feels like almost more nimble like a BMX bike. So I'm really liking the form factor and size of this bike. It feels like I can zip around better and change directions faster than I can on some of the bigger bikes. But yeah, guys, this, guy, this bike's a lot of fun. And I hope from watching the video, you can kind of tell that. You know, this isn't gonna to apply to everyone, but I wanted to throw it in there because I live on the second story of a building and I like to give these what I call the stair test. And so far, this bike, out of any of the bikes I've tested, has the easiest carryability. So I'm able to take this up the stairs, no problem. All right, now it's time to answer that question. Would I recommend this bike? The answer to that question is, Yes, I would. This is a nice budget-friendly e-bike offering that checks all the necessary boxes. It has a big 1006 watt-hour battery that I think you could realistically expect to get a range of about 40 miles out of this bike, assuming you're not riding in pedal assist 5 or using the throttle the entire time. It has a 1000 watt motor, which is extremely quiet. It has a controller that puts out about 1350 watts, which is making this a pretty powerful bike. One thing I wish this bike did have, I wish this bike was equipped with hydraulic disc brakes, but rest assured, all those these are my mechanical disc brakes, they do the necessary, which is stop your bike. Another thing I did encounter on the ride is the kill switch on this bike is located right next to the throttle, and I did accidentally hit it a few times, which is just cuts off the power and you just have to press the button again. If you're interested in buying a Sonata Herald, Use one of the links in the description of this video. The pricing is a bit confusing because although this bike is listed at $18.99, I've been checking every day for the last couple weeks and I have never seen this bike listed for higher than $15.79. And that being said, you can use my coupon code STC80 to get an additional $80 off your purchase. I enjoyed my time on the Herald and I will be writing this more than just this review. But guys, thanks for watching this video and uh, look forward to seeing you in the next one. Hey, take care guys.